having me again. Uh, I think this is maybe my fourth or fifth time doing this talk and every time somebody learns something a little bit new about what occupational therapy is. Um, so if you're wondering what occupational therapy is, or we call it OT for short, um, occupational therapy is helping you with taking care of you. So it's the job of taking care of yourself. Uh, and that could be anything from the basics like getting dressed up and out of bed, uh, showering, dressing, uh, anything that's just minimal you taking care of your personal life and then it could also be some of the more complex things like you know yard work doing the dishes cooking cleaning those types of things or just being out enjoying time with your family getting in and out of restaurants the more complex parts of life that we take for granted sometimes so um, I have a lot of cool gadgets here just because it's fun to see and feel some of the things that we can talk with you about. Um, a lot of what we do in occupational therapy is problem solve with the patient. So for example, somebody comes in and says, I'm really just having a hard time cooking because I can't use my knife as well as I used to and I just feel nervous that I'm gonna cut myself. And that's when we kind of problem solve and hey, have you tried you know, just a different type of utensil? And usually that either helps helps the person get the job done or it makes it a little bit easier, less cumbersome for them. Um, so I recognize some of your faces from being in our clinic before. If you didn't know, we just got a brand new facility and we'd love to see some new faces there. Um, we like especially catering our therapy and our treatments to the individual. So um, anything that you can think of that you're having trouble with, we really customize it and personalize it to, to you. Um, so some of the things that I brought, if we're talking about the job of taking care of yourself, I brought some cool toys that we can kind of pass around and you've probably seen some of these before, maybe you haven't. So if we're passing some of these things around and uh, you have questions about what they are, just shout it out and maybe you can take a guess at what some of these things are. I'm sure people have seen this gadget before, right? Anyone who's had like a hip surgery. This one's really neat. This is called this is called a dressing stick or a dressing aid, and what it is is it's got this kind of rubberized material on the end for anyone who's having trouble getting their coat or their sweater on and off. Sometimes it's hard to get that reach around into your jacket, and so this little gadget can just sort of clip and grab your shoulder up over, or grab the shoulder of your jacket up over your arm. And it also has a little stick in case you need to pick something up off the floor, this little loop here. What's that called again? This right here? Yeah. This is called a dressing aid or a dressing stick. Yeah. Um, so those are, those are some tools that we use for dressing, as well as this little guy. This is called a button hooker. And so I always try to wear a shirt when I come here that has buttons because what you can do, if you're having trouble with your fingers making these little push and pull in the button inside the, the loop, then what you can do is take the button hooker here, and I hope you can see this, is you thread it in through the hole, gap, grab the button, and pull it through. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And it also has a hook on the other end of that, and you can use that for zippers. Yeah. So those are some of our cool to tools for dressing. I also have a, a few for eating. Um, if anyone's ever having trouble, like they are having a difficult time holding on to their fork or their spoon, salads are a pain to eat. Peas on a plate are a pain to eat. And so we, we've come up with some different ways to problem solve catching the food on the fork, basically. And so some things that we may recommend are a bowl or a plate that has a little bit of a lip to it. And so that just kind of uses it as a backstop that you can scoop and it will stay on your fork a little easier. Um, th this comes in plate form also. We have weighted utensils, built up utensils. I really like the weighted utensils like this. Do they look very medical related to you? Does it look like a piece of equipment or does it look like something you may have in your drawer? Just a little bit fatter, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really like this because it, it's pretty unassuming. It doesn't look like something like that, 
that looks a little bit more medical. And it's weighted too, it's heavier in your hand. So if you compare this to like a plastic fork that you would use at a restaurant, it really just sets in your hand nicely. Anyone who has a tremor or weakness or is having trouble getting that, that precise grip on their fork or on their spoon, having something fatter and just resting in your hand, it makes it a lot easier to keep that food on your fork. And so we like to trial some of these things. Not every piece of equipment works for everyone. Yeah. It's a little bit lighter weight, this one, but it's just fatter and so it fits in your hand a little bit easier. This one is a nice one because it's nice and wide and fat for um, soup, vegetables, yeah. anything that can slip a little. I think it's technically a soup spoon, but I like to recommend that for anyone who's having trouble with um, smaller things like vegetables. And then, how about this thing? Anybody? Yeah, a wine bottle opener. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> a little bit, but it doesn't have the corkscrew thing to it, this part. Yeah. So this is anyone who's having trouble cutting food two-handed. So you can take this, and this is your rocker knife. Like a pizza cutter. Yeah, like a pizza cutter. And so, exactly. I love that you said that, because when we have people who come in, into therapy and they say, I don't want to buy a piece of equipment that I'll probably use maybe a couple times or I just want to try it, I say get a pizza cutter and try it to cut your food because you can still use that one-handed. Not everything is solved with a piece of equipment and so when you come into therapy, we try to problem solve. If you don't want to buy a piece of equipment, then we'll, we'll come up with something that you may already have laying around your house. So something as simple as opening your drawer and just using something you already have for a different purpose. Um, so those are our eating utensils. We have a few different types, some high tech and some low tech in our, um, in our facility. But uh, I just wanted to show you the most common things that I, that I help people kind of trial um, if they're having trouble with eating. Something a little bit similar to the weighted utensils are weighted bowls. And so this sits real nice on the table and it doesn't move or jiggle when you're trying to scrape food out of it and so it's just a little bit heftier. Same thing, yeah, if you don't wanna buy a piece of equipment, we say if your plate's sliding all over the place, just use a heavier plate, you know, mm -hmm. rather than a piece of, pa like a paper plate or plastic or something just a little, with a little more heft to it and that can help prevent your food from spilling all over the place too. What do we think of this? Sippy cup. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you for saying that. It's a, it looks like a sippy cup, right? That's not why I brought it. I don't like it because it looks like a sippy cup, but I do like it for this purpose. Because you can just slip your hand right in there. Anyone who's having trouble like holding on to a glass, um, if they can't get the, the mug like this, all we do is say, have you ever tried holding it like that before? And then you don't have to use your fingers and have to hold on to the mug handle. And you don't have to hold on to the, the width of the cup like this. This is all, I'm, I'm not even holding a grip on it. So some people who are having trouble holding their cup and bringing it to their face, we just say, look in your cabinet and find a cup that has a handle like this. And that just takes away a lot of effort. And that one's weighted also, so it feels heavy. Okay, any questions so far? No? Yeah. Have you ever had people use those utensils in a restaurant? I do have people who buy maybe one or two sets of that, just so you can have one in the house, or if one's dirty, grab the other set. You don't need to buy you know, a whole, a whole array of those um, pieces of utensils. But um, yeah, there are some people who take them out. You just be careful you don't yeah. forget it there, because they're not cheap. It's an investment a little bit. I mean, one of those spoons, if I had to guess, probably costs around $25 or so. Um, so, which is why if you don't want to spend the money or if you want to try something, then we usually try to like mock it up by using like, this is just a piece of 
um, electrical insulation foam. And so we try to mock it up like, okay, so if we put a spoon inside here, does that make it feel like it's sitting better in your hand? And so before someone goes out and buys something, we try to, um, sure. yeah, we try to give it a, sh a shot before you purchase something. These pieces of foam or tubing, we can put on anything. Um, toothbrush, pencil, if you're having trouble holding on to your pen, pen or pencil, then we just kind of fatten up the grips a little bit and that really just helps widen and soften your hand a little bit. And a lot of times that just kind of helps with the writing or um, brushing teeth just go a little bit smoother. So if you haven't tried something like that, look around your house, find a fatter pen that you could try to use or a heavier pen that you could try to use rather than like one of those small ballpoint pens. Uh, and that might be, you know, as simple, as easy as that of a solution. Along the hands of writing, this is a new toy that we got. I'll let you, it's, it's relatively low tech. I mean, there's not much to it, but feel it. This is along the same lines of something that's weighted. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's having trouble with handwriting or you're noticing that your hand is shaking as you're going across the page or it's looking a little scratchier than it used to, then weighted anything is the, the key. We try to, to teach handwriting in occupational therapy by using larger movements, so practicing writing bigger, practicing large amplitude exercises and then translating it into handwriting, something a little bit more fine motor, something smaller. Um, and a lot of people have success with that. After you guys are done with your classes and you're doing any of these big exercises where you've got your hands out and you're reaching and you're throwing balls, do you ever notice that some of the more fine motor movements are a little easier afterwards? Anyone experience that? No? <coughs> so that's something that we also try to practice in therapy is big movements, if you wanna say, I'm having trouble reaching to turn the faucet on. Then what we do is we really exaggerate those movements and we try to make it as big as possible and then hopefully the, that, the ease and the fluidity will translate into something smaller. So same thing with handwriting. We practice handwriting really big on like a big chalkboard or something and then we we'd kind of translate it down into smaller, smaller and we're getting smoother movements, more, um, more fluidity in our movements and less scratchy, less choppy um, handwriting. So that's something that we also really practice in therapy a lot. If you're having any trouble handwriting, come see us because it's a lot of fun to work on. And I brought a lot of kitchen examples of just tools that we probably use anyways that we could you know, sometimes take for granted. But something like this, a can opener, this is kind of a nifty invention. It's a one-handed can opener. Um, there are plenty of things on the market that aren't you know, sold in a therapy office uh, that are just, it could make your life a little easier. So part of our job is to kind of figure out what you're having trouble with, using your hands, using your body. And if there's a product out there that we know of, then we can recommend it and you can try it too, okay? I have here, and I'll let you guys pass this magazine around of just a whole bunch of different examples of pieces of equipment or um, gadgets sometimes. that ha A lot of these are kind of what I'm showing you up here, but if you wanna browse through that, we've got a lot of that in our, in our gym also. Um, okay, I've got a couple other things here too. Who knows what this is? It's an elastic shoelace. You've seen these before. Yeah, when you got hip surgery. Hip surgery, yeah. So a lot of what I'm showing you is like meant or um, manufactured for people other than people with Parkinson's. So a lot of them are manufactured for people who have arthritis or um, other joint disorders because it's more marketable, I think. I don't know, everybody has arthritis, it seems like. So um, if you go online and you're ever looking for a piece of equipment, I just usually Google or look for arthritis supplies and you can usually find what you need 
pretty quickly. Um, so it's kind of like being creative. Of not everybody needs something specific for a person with Parkinson's, but um, arthritis is a, is a common enough uh, diagnosis that usually there's a lot of products out there for people that work across the board. So this is elastic shoelace. You lace it up into your shoe and that eliminates, you tie it once and then that eliminates the need to do the, the lacing and the unlacing every time you put on your shoe. You can just, it turns any normal shoe into a slip-on shoe. And so that really just kind of takes the frustration out of tying your shoe and getting shoelaces on and off every day. So if that's something that's just really, you're struggling with it, it's just taking too much time and effort. Sometimes what we do is we just like to, I mean, where you can cut corners a little bit, we'll cut corners. People who have more interest in getting out the door than being stuck in their room trying to tie up their shoelaces, then we'll say, okay, let's for forego the shoelaces and we'll find some easier way to do this so that you can get to where you're trying to go, if that makes sense. Um, it's kind of a give and take, right? They really work good though, it's surprising. They do. Well, by the time you're in the Tie them once right and then out. you just slip your foot right in and out. So they're a real time saver, mm -hmm. a real frustration saver too. So there are some other gadgets. If you don't like the electric or <laughs> elastic shoelaces, then we have shoelace clips. We have, I mean, a couple different tools or um, pieces of equipment for a lot of different um, for a lot of different tasks. So if one thing doesn't work for you, then we try another. And if you know equipment doesn't work for you, equipment's not always the answer. But if it'll make your life a little bit easier then we'll recommend a piece of equipment. And if not, we, we practice and we exercise and we try to use some of these big movements and translate them into the small fine motor movements and really practice the, th the task that you're having trouble with. So this is very similar to elastic shoelaces. Does the same thing is you just lace your shoe into that, your shoelace into those holes, pinch and pull. And that's how you tighten your shoelaces. I heard that you and David were working on balance. Okay, balance, yep. So physical therapists at our office, they love working with people on balance. Um, some faces in here have been through our clinic before and they've kind of, <laughs> they've gotten the balance training. Um, but we kind of work on some of the more practical in occupational therapy, some of the more practical aspects of balance. So things like getting in and out of the car, getting in and out of bed, where some people feel like they get caught in the sheets. We really practice like flinging the sheets up over yourself. And that's how, that's kind of one of the, the ways that we practice um, moving your body in your own environment a little bit more efficiently and kind of getting through those tedious things a little faster, a little easier. Getting in and out of the car is, is a tricky one, especially if you've got the low cars or the high cars that you have to step into. And so we really problem solve and kind of find the best way for you to use your body mechanics um, and using your body to kind of build that momentum and really leaning forward out of the car. Um, out of restaurant chairs, your soft couches. So we practice all of those things in, in our gym too. So um, mobility and using your hands, using your hands for taking care of yourself is something that we really, really like to cater to the person. Any questions? Yeah. Where's your office? Where's our office? So we just moved yesterday. We opened up a brand new building. It's, um, do you know where the Five Star Intersection is here in North Arlington? Uh -huh. It's right behind the gas station. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you're interested, in, if you think that, oh my gosh, I could use something like this or I could really help, it would really help me to kind of problem solve some of these things that I'm having trouble with around the house, um, then talk to your doctor. Your doctor can write a prescription. And then what you do is you come for an evaluation and you really say, oh, I'm having trouble with this, this, and this, and my goal is to make it to my grandson's soccer game. I really am exhausted by the time I get in and out of the house, getting dressed, 
cooked breakfast, taking my medicine, everything is just taking it out of me and by the time soccer practice comes around, I'm too tired to go. This is my favorite tool ever. This is called Dysum. So what you do is you cut a little piece of this like sticky tape stuff off and then you can use this to open jar lids, you can use it as a placemat, you can use it um, on your pencil if your fingers are slipping on your pencil, you can use it really anything you can imagine. But it's nice because it doesn't leave residue on your fingers, it just really adds like an extra Blair. strong grip. So that stuff is really nice. And then I have oops, Dysum, it's, called, it's spelled D-Y-C-E-M. Last but not least, I have, this is called a swivel board. Anyone, you guys look like you are very mobile, not having any trouble moving around in tight spaces, but if you are, this is a disc on top of a disc and it swivels like this. So, I recommend this for people who are having trouble moving in tight spaces like their bathroom or um, around tight corners. What you do is somebody who goes from sitting to standing, they s put their feet on this and they usually have a caregiver or partner swivel like this. And then you can go from point A to point B without having to try to maneuver. If you ever use a walker or a cane, this is just a lot less cumbersome and it's easier on your back and your caregiver's back to just kind of swivel like that. So you guys don't need one of these, but it's kind of neat. The smaller version of that on your car seat. <coughs> yeah, we did talk about this. I never found one. Did you? I never found one that we could um, practice so with. Yeah, but this, they, they do sell one that has a cushion on it. This is like for your feet, but um, it has a cushion on it, and so if anyone's having trouble getting in and out of the car, sit on, put this on your car seat, and then you can kind of swivel your body around from outside to inside. Um, the cheaper low-tech version of that is a grocery bag, a Kroger bag, plastic bag. Put it on the car seat, and it just takes away the friction, and so you can swivel in and out a little bit easier. This is, um, it swivels right onto your lamp switch. So instead of using your like teeny tiny fingers to pinch and twist, this builds it up and so you can use like the palm of your hand a little bit, you can use, you can kind of like hook your fingers in there a little bit better. And so this is very um, handy. Like I said, people who have arthritis, this is marketed towards people with arthritis and so that's why any tool that you may need, we can find it usually in our, an arthritis magazine or website or something like that. I do have fun kind of problem solving some of these things with people. Everyone comes in with a unique issue or something that they're struggling with. Um, and so kind of problem solving with the patient is something that's really fun and exciting. And finally when we get it, it's like, oh, gosh, I never tried that before. And sometimes the patient comes up with it on their own and I use it for other people down the road too. So it's, it's really interesting.